I'm going to show you four things to consider when troubleshooting connectivity issues with the on-premises data gateway. Hi, I'm Adam Saxon and welcome to Guy in a Cube, a channel dedicated to helping you and your business gain insight by learning and growing on the Microsoft Business Intelligence stack. And today's video came out of a conversation I had last week revolving around connectivity to a SQL server, specifically a named instance SQL server, and they were getting a specific error. And what I'd like to do is just go through my thought process on troubleshooting connectivity issues. These can be applied to any type of data source, SQL server, Oracle, anything. Okay, let's paint the picture here. We are trying to connect from the gateway to a SQL server named instance. And when we do that, we're getting an error message. The error message indicates that we couldn't connect or find the SQL server itself. If we look at the details of the error message, this message is actually coming from either the client provider or the server itself, the actual data source. So in this case, it's coming from the SQL client library saying that, hey, I couldn't connect to the SQL server that you gave me. One pro tip here, if you see error 26 in the error message, that is an issue connecting to SQL browser itself. SQL browser is required when we're connecting to a named instance with the actual name of the instance. So server slash name. SQL browser is actually used to convert that name into the actual port number or pipe name that we're actually going to physically connect to. So right away, I know that we have an issue with SQL browser. That helps. Okay, on to the troubleshooting. The first thing we're gonna look at is can we connect locally? So one thing you need to consider is, is the gateway actually remote on a different machine than the actual SQL server? And if that's the case, can we actually do something on the local SQL server to test if connectivity works? You can use Management Studio or something like a UDL or Universal Data Link file, or even maybe create an ODBC DSN and just test connectivity through that. But make sure it's a local on the actual machine, the data source machine that you have. In this scenario, we're going to say that that was successful. We could connect locally. So we know that the issue is specific to remote communication to the server. So had we installed the gateway locally on the actual SQL server, this would probably have worked just fine without any problem. And in my head, I've already got a gut feel for what the problem is, but let's keep going down the troubleshooting path and see what we can narrow down. So the second thing that we're gonna look at is, I know that we're having issues with remote communication. So now on the actual gateway machine, I wanna get the gateway out of the picture. Because chances are, this probably has nothing to do with the gateway itself. This just has to do with connectivity. We can test that connectivity in the same way that we did locally, and that is either through a UDL file or something like Management Studio. If you have SQL Server, I'd prefer to use Management Studio in this case because it's a .NET application, and that's what the gateway is going to use to connect. If you have a different data source, then use the tool that came with it. So for example, for Oracle, I'd probably use SQL Plus. Okay, in this example, Management Studio is actually going to give me the same error that the gateway was getting. So that's good. We know that the issue is not the gateway. We just have a general connectivity issue. That leads us to the third item, which is to verify the firewall on the Windows server itself and or inspect anything that's in between your remote machine and the actual data source machine. Typically what I've seen, especially for SQL Server, is that it's the Windows firewall itself that's enabled and causing the problem. And this all comes down to ports. Which ports do we open up for the firewall? A default instance of SQL Server is going to be sitting on port 1433, a TCP port. But in this case, we're using a named instance. And named instance, by default, use a dynamic TCP port. So we'd actually have to go look and see what that port is to know to open that port. And for a named instance, a lot of people will just open up the port for the SQL instance itself. However, I mentioned SQL Browser is also required. And SQL Browser is done for that name lookup to the port. So what port does SQL Browser sit on? It sits on UDP 1434. So you would need to open up the UDP 1434 port for SQL Browser, and you would need to open up the TCP port for the actual named instance server itself. If we were to just do that, the error would go away. That leads me to my fourth item, and that is to actually allow an application through the firewall instead of a specific port. We talked about how named instances use a dynamic TCP port by default. And so the problem here is that when that TCP port changes for the named instance, 
your firewall rule is now broke. And so by adding the actual application through the firewall, your it doesn't matter what that port is, it will always be available through the firewall. So when it changes, you don't have to muck around with any of the firewall rules, it just works. Now from a security perspective, being intentional about what ports that you open up in your firewall is definitely more secure than just opening up the entire application as you have less control over what's going on. But for a lot of cases, this approach may work better for you and be less friction from a management perspective. If you are gonna add applications through your firewall for SQL browser, it's a little hard to find. It's actually a 32-bit application. So if you have a 64-bit server, you're gonna to wanna to look in Program Files x86, and it's gonna be under Microsoft SQL Server in the 90 folder and then in the shared folder. And you'll see sqlbrowser.exe. The key for troubleshooting connectivity issues, for me at least, is to narrow it down to the most simplest form. And that's really why I recommended getting the gateway out of the picture. Let's make sure it's not a gateway issue and be going down that rat hole. Okay, was this video helpful or do you maybe have another connectivity related question that I didn't necessarily answer? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. Every Tuesday I do a technical item just like this. And every Thursday I do an information roundup where I look at the last week and share that out with you. Thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.